This lesson is on that. That is a relatively small section, so small that sometimes it's actually not even asked in exam papers. But when it is asked, it counts about 10 marks and is generally a relatively easy section to do well in. So it's a good thing to study for it. Um, that is stands for value added tax. It's a tax that is charged on most items um, and is paid to SARS, South African Revenue Services. Okay, with that, there are three different amounts that we can refer to. We can refer to that exclusive amount, that amount, or that inclusive amount. That exclusive is the price of a product before that has been added. That is 15% of that amount. And that inclusive is when you take the price of the product and you add 15% of it on as that, and now that is added on to your price. It's a higher price. Now it is that inclusive. In calculations, we refer to that exclusive with 100%, that as 15%, and that inclusive as 115. This is because we start off at the full price of 100. You then add 15% of the 100 to get to 115%. Okay. This will help when it comes to the calculations. So basically for the calculations, they can give you certain amounts and they could ask you for either that exclusive, that or that inclusive, giving you either any of them. So uh, this is a formula which I've used for, you can use it literally for any VAT calculation. So you take the amount that you have, okay, and you times by a fraction. The fraction is want over have. The fraction has to do with the percentages over here. So if you want VAT exclusive, you times with 100 at the top, and if you have VAT, you divide by the 15%. So the want over have is your percentages. So whatever percentage you have over whatever percentage you, sorry, whatever, it's whatever percentage you want over whatever percentage you have. And this will give you your new amount. So an example is if that inclusive is 575 Rand and you want that, what you would do is you take your 575 because that's the amount given, the amount. Multiplied by what you want. What you want is that. So that is 15%, but you can just say 50. Over that inclusive, which is 115%, because that is what you have. You have that inclusive. That calculation will give you 75. Therefore, that equals 75 Rand. Let's say, for example, they said that inclusive is 575, but they want that exclusive. What you would do is you keep your same amount, 575, multiply by what you want. You want that exclusive. That exclusive is 100%. So There's going to be 100 over what you have, which is 115. And then you would get a that exclusive amount. I think it, it would be 500. So those are, they can ask it different ways around. And it's just about manipulating the amount times want have formula. Then we move on to VAT input and VAT output. This is, hasn't got anything to do with inclusive and exclusive. VAT input is the VAT on items with regards to business purchases. So it's whether the business bought stock on cash or credit and whether they returned the stock or not to the supplier. It's these type of um, purchases and transactions. VAT output is VAT on items with regards to business sales. So that means it's the VAT on any product or stock that the, good, that the business is selling, either on cash or credit, and also whether the data returns it or not. So generally, VAT input is calculated at cost price, and VAT output is 15% of selling price. In order to calculate how much you owe to SARS, or how much SARS owes you, because this could be a thing, you would take that output and say minus that input. That output is generally higher, but not always. SARS can definitely owe you. 
um, that would be if your VAT input is higher. Okay. Another way to calculate it is to use a VAT control T account. I always chose the VAT control T account because it is it's more working with accounting and shows you could be forced to use the VAT control T account. If you're given an empty block and asked to calculate, you can still draw a T account in that block. Okay. So VAT control, basically on the right or on the credit side, it's to um, increase on the side and it decreases on this side. It's kind of like a liability. So on this side would be if you are ending up on this side after you've balanced everything, it means that we owe SARS. But if it is on this side, it means SARS owes us. So that's why I mean by positive and negative and increasing, decreasing. So, because we know that if that output is higher, then that input will have a positive and that would be on this side. If that input is higher, we would have a negative and then it would be on this side. But let me explain it more to do with how you would um, use the T account. So any money or any VAT on an item going out of the business would be over here on the credit side. So that refers to any positive output VAT and any negative input VAT. Positive output VAT refers to positive output. So output VATs are sales, basically. A negative output VAT, VAT would be if it was a sale, but then the data returned it. That would be a negative output because it's not the general flow of things. It's not generally going a sale. It would be a negative output would be a return. So a positive output is any sale, cash or credit. And then input, a positive input over here, would be any basic purchase. The VAT on the basic purchase, where the negative would be more on the opposite of that. So it's still got to do with the purchase, but it's when something we've purchased, we're going to return. So ultimately on your credit side, it's anything that is going out. So either through sale, so at selling price as a positive output, or through a negative input of returning stock at cost price. On the debit side, it would be any amount coming in. So it would be um, anything purchased that is coming in or as a positive input, or it would be a negative output with regards to the opposite, basically, of a sale. So it was something that was sold, but then was returned. So the stock is coming back in. So you kind of have to reverse the positive output over here. And you would balance this to account as a normal balancing. Generally, the reason we say is the reason the generally the reason we owe SARS is because generally your output is higher than your input because output is generally at selling price, where input is generally at cost price, and selling price is normally higher than cost price. That's the only reason we generally have a higher output than input. But sometimes it can happen. If you had very low sales one month and you purchase a lot of stock, you, SARS can owe you. Okay. Examples of these different, like a positive input, positive output, negative output, negative input. A positive input is generally bought stock on cash or credit. A negative input would be return stock to supplier. Positive output is stock sold on cash or credit. And then negative output, that is return stock. Okay. Now, this can seem very confusing because it's a completely new and weird concept. So what I normally do with my, they'll give you probably a list of transactions and you have to kind of work out the amount owing to SARS. So what you're going to do is go to each transaction and decide whether it's an input or an output. So whether it has to do with purchasing, either you're actually purchasing it or you're returning your purchase, and whether 
it is an or an output where it's got to do with sales and whether you actually sold something or whether the sale was returned. Once you've decided whether it's an output or input, you just write O or I next to each of them and then go decide whether your output was positive or negative and whether your input was positive or negative. So you go to all your outputs and you say, okay, was the sale an actual sale or was it a return? So just return. Once you've worked that out, it's very easy to slip them into the different parts. If you know that plus O and minus I goes on this side and plus I and minus O goes on this side. I used to just write it at the little top over here and then it would be a lot easier to slip them in. The amounts that go in here are only the VAT on the product. So it's only the 15%. So if the stock, that inclusive amount was 600 Rand, you wouldn't enter the 600 Rand. You would only enter 15% of the 600 Rand. So be careful that you only have to enter the VAT amount in here. Then you would go and balance your account. And if your balance was a credit balance, you owed SARS that amount. If it was a debit balance, SARS owed you that amount. With this section, it's generally practice making perfect, especially with being able to distinguish between that input, that output, and whether they are positive or negatives. I hope that helps, and that is all for that.